One topic, two opinions. Can Arabs and Jews be friends? Wow, tough to say. A clear yes. The mood ring changes color. To red when our guests agree. Blue when they don't. Hi, it's been Hi, I'm Fatima from Frankfurt. I'm committed to promoting dialogue between Arabs and Jews because it's really important to me. Hi, my name is Mike. Especially when things start to heat up again in the Middle East, I unfortunately experience hostility, predominantly from the Arab or Muslim community. Will they come closer? Or will the mood get chillier? Anti-Semitism comes mainly from the Arab community. Feels that way. I would say no. If you say certain things that openly show you're Jewish, sometimes that's all it takes. Or just posting pictures from Israel or with an Israeli flag is sometimes provocation enough for a few people to leave comments ranging from free Palestine to the worst insults and threats. And often they come from people with an Arab or Turkish background. From Menschen with an Arab or Turkish background. I come from Frankfurt. From my area and my perspective there, I can only say that, actually, we're on the same side the whole time. My background's Moroccan. We had the same holidays. After Passover, we celebrated together. My grandfather had a best friend who I called uncle. Only at his funeral did I realize he was a Jew. I'm happy about your experience, but take for example our Maccabi clubs. If you go to the sports field and play there with a Star of David on your chest, you'll have the experience of being attacked because you're Jewish. And often it feels like it comes from the Arab or Muslim community. It's too bad because you always hear from those with nothing but negative things to say. That's why I'm speaking out. Folks think, oh, she's an Arab, so I can badmouth Jews around her. Then they get to know me and never do that again. It's hard work, though, and I know I'll come in for quite a bruising. I wish folks would lend more of an ear to people like you, that you'd be heard more in your own community. In the Jewish community, there is a hatred of Arabs. I've never experienced it. I think hate is maybe not the right word here. It's more of a dislike that sprung up from angst, from fear. There's also the situation that groups of people walk by you and yell stuff after you. Everything from fuck Israel to dirty Jew. That's also part of the reality. When I started wearing my kippah, my grandmother said to me, wouldn't you rather wear sunglasses instead? She was afraid that when I went out on the street, it would make me recognizable as Jewish and someone would beat me up. I really feel for you. I think it's good that you're wearing a kippah today. Today, people say Jewish life is part of Germany, but that it's not visible. When I talk to people and ask, why don't you wear one? And the reason is that they don't dare to, then something is wrong. I know what it's like to suffer discrimination due to your appearance. And because I have no other choice, I've learned to live with it, but also to use it. Not just by talking about it, but through action. Action speaks louder than words. Jewish-Arab dialogue has deteriorated. Partly yes, partly no. It depends on where you are. For Germany, I'd say a marginal yes, because it's developed that way somehow. I think it's a shame that such little education is taking place. I see things pretty much the way you do, and the tone in Germany has grown harsher. And I believe you can sense that online most of all. Every time you start talking about Judaism or even Israel in whatever form, there's a lot of blowback. And unfortunately that blowback occasionally gets carried over onto the streets. For my part, I clean Stolpersteine, stones that honor victims of the Nazis, as I think that's important. I try to inspire young people to join in. 
you can't imagine how great it is to give kids a task and watch them get caught up in it because they see the end result. They see it's clean and shiny, but there's also a story behind it. And I actually have had negative experiences. Mothers have spoken to me saying they don't want their children to go there. Some of the Arab mothers didn't think it was a good idea. But then I explained to them in their mother tongue, on equal terms and in a friendly way, what it's really about. And that if they call themselves Muslims, they should do these things as role models. Afterwards, they were completely thrilled. The next time, I had twice as many kids with me. Can I do something? Really? How cool. I think it's great. I'm not alone. There's lots of us. Israel is a topic that hangs over every conversation. Over a few. I would say no. I'm a Berliner. I was born here. And yet I'm constantly confronted with it. Now and then I get comments like this. What's your president doing there? Then I say, likely sitting in Bellevue Palace, signing things into law. I think what's important to note is... No matter what our political opinions are, we're not ambassadors for our countries of origin. We haven't chosen to take responsibility for something. And for me, by the way, it's not even my country of origin. I can sense that this really affects you. And that's a shame because it actually shouldn't be happening here. We're here and we live together here. We have to break things down and find the common ground here. But it's the same when I'm sitting across from someone with Palestinian roots, for example. I can't deny that things might have happened to his family which had to do with the Jews or Israel and weren't so good. Here we're neighbors. Here we have entirely different opportunities. We have the chance to either bring the conflict from there over here, or we have the chance from here to help solve the conflict over there. There is too much historical baggage between Jews and Arabs for a dialogue. Absolutely not. I don't see it that way at all. Quite the contrary. Many people worry about falling into the divide. I'm on this side of the border, you're on the other side, so we must not like one another. But that's not true. Look back 50, 100 or 200 years in history and you might discover, hey, not only did I like you once, I might have even been your neighbor. That's a really good point. I can cite Morocco as an example, because it is like that. It's anchored in our culture. We live together. In Morocco, children learn about Jewish history in primary school. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it was introduced by the king. There are such wonderful things that we can also celebrate and eat together. I miss that here. I know there's a Holocaust Remembrance Day hashtag, but why isn't it a holiday? Why can't that be changed? That's an incredibly positive approach. But I think that with people from other regions of the world who haven't been taught this and who've been raised since childhood to hate Jews, it might be a bit more difficult. Here in Berlin, I also took part in demonstrations which argued for Israel's right to exist. That was enough to provoke extremely hostile reactions, both online and offline, all the way through to death threats. It's not acceptable that you suffer discrimination just for flying the flag. It also makes you realize that as much as we'd like to have a world in which friendly coexistence is possible, like we've just said, that's not quite the reality. Judaism and Islam have a lot in common. Absolutely. Clearly. The Quran is based on the Old Testament. We honor all the prophets, we have the same names. We're all related, we're all descended from one father. Moses is one of the most frequently mentioned names in the Quran. There's so much that 
There's so much that should connect us, from the personal family stories to the experiences you have as a person from an immigrant background here in Germany. In Deutschland macht einen verbinden sollte, verbinden müsste. Ich bin mal früher. I used to go to schools where we had to talk about our religion and explain what was so special about it. And when I began relating the history of our religion, people started to notice. Oh, so much similar to that of the Muslim who spoke just before. We noticed there are way more things that connect us than things which separate us. So what's the conclusion? Did our guests grow any closer? To be honest, it was a bit of an emotional roller coaster in parts because I was so moved by many of the things Mike said. I feel really good. I must say, Fatima was an incredibly interesting and pleasant person to talk to. We don't always have to be of the same opinion to have common goals and want to reach them. I experienced that today and I'm glad that I got to meet him. I firmly believe that Jews and Arabs can be friends. We've already exchanged numbers. We'll meet up again for sure.